Welcome back to Enchanted Adventures, and welcome to Liberty Square in the Magic Kingdom. Today we are going to dive into the details and history that surrounds us as we walk through this area. These are details that are missed by most guests, so this video will help you appreciate and enjoy Liberty Square more on your next visit. If you enjoy this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. We really need the help to get this new channel started and build up a following. Thanks. As we walk through Liberty Square, we should pay attention to the numbering on each building, beginning at the Haunted Mansion and progressing down all the way through Frontierland. Each building features a number that corresponds to the year with which that architectural style was popular. We are literally moving through time as we move through Liberty Square and down into Frontierland. It starts at the Haunted Mansion, which represents a Dutch Gothic architecture found in the Hudson Valley in New York in the late 1600s or early 1700s. We then move into areas where we see New England style structures, then to colonial style architecture of Philadelphia in the late 1700s by the Hall of Presidents, to a rustic, rougher Western style architecture of the West from 1800s into the frontier land. As we move closer towards the Hall of Presidents, the spirit of patriotism and colonialism is increased as we move through time to Philadelphia in the era of the American Revolution. The Hall of Presidents itself is modeled after a combination of federal style buildings from Philadelphia and the number 1787 above the main entrance references the year the United States Constitution was ratified. The lobby of the Hall of Presidents features a wonderful exhibit of actual clothing and items owned by some of the former presidents of the United States, as well as a unique design that can only be found elsewhere in the White House. The presidential seal can be found in beautiful detail on the carpet and is sanctioned off with ropes so no guests walk over it. This illustration and symbol of the presidency can only be found elsewhere on the carpet of the White, White House's Oval Office. Several other incredible details throughout the courtyard near the Hall of Presidents reference important moments in the history of the American Revolution, including a small window on the second floor of a rounded portion of the attraction's building. If we look closely, we will notice two lanterns glowing, which references Paul Revere's famous warning of the British coming, one if by land, two if by sea. While looking up, we should also check out other windows in the area, paying specific attention to their shutters, which look slightly askew. This is a very subtle detail that references how shutters at the time were attached with leather since all metal was being melted down for ammunition in the Revolutionary War and was in short supply. The leather functionally worked, but it would stretch over time so that the shutters would ultimately look slightly crooked. If you've ever enjoyed a meal overlooking Fantasyland from the second level of Columbia Harbor House, you may have noticed that much of this restaurant is actually located in Fantasyland. The backstory of the Columbia Harbor House brings nautical ties to Liberty Square and represents two harbors, one in the colonies where guests enter Liberty Square and one in England represented by the subtle changes in decor and windows overlooking more European style inspired Fantasyland. The restaurant's name further pulls the story together as Columbia is a reference to the Columbia sailing ship which in 1787 became the first American sailing ship to circumnavigate the globe. Taking its cues from other revolutionary towns, Liberty Square is home to its very own Liberty Tree. The original Liberty Tree was located in Boston, where the Sons of Liberty met to discuss plans to protest the Stamp Act early in the Revolution in 1765. The Liberty Tree is an over 100-year-old southern live oak moved about eight miles from the other side of Walt Disney World property in time for the opening of the Magic Kingdom. The tree's size and shape made its move a challenge for Bill Evans, the head landscaper of the Magic Kingdom at the time. Evans devised a plan where holes were drilled through the base of the tree so steel rods could be used to hoist it up out of the ground, moved, and then replanted in Liberty Square where it sits today. Hanging on the tree are 13 lanterns representing the 13 colonies. If we enter Liberty Square from Frontierland or Fantasyland, we see the Liberty Square Riverboat in front of us. The Liberty Bell, 
is a steam-powered paddle wheeler modeled after the ones that were used to sail the Mississippi River during the 1800s. It takes guests on a leisurely tour of the rivers of America with views of Frontierland, Tom Sawyer Island, and Liberty Square. The trip is narrated by Samuel Clemens, who had been a steamboat captain and loved the Mississippi River. Samuel Clemens was also known by his writing name of Mark Twain and wrote many stories and tales about life on the Mississippi, including Tom Sawyer. Between the Liberty Tree Tavern and the Liberty Tree stands a replica of the Liberty Bell that was in Philadelphia. It was cast for Walt Disney World Resort in 1989. The bell was cast for Walt Disney World using the exact same mold as the original Liberty Bell. It was placed into its present location just in time for the 1989 Independence Day celebration. Around the bell, there are 13 flags that represent the original 13 colonies. I hope you enjoyed this dive into the secrets and details of Liberty Square in the Magic Kingdom in Disney World. Uh, please stay tuned and we will have more videos like this and other great ideas that we have coming forward in the, in the coming days. So, so keep watching and thanks. Bye.